the red corner, wearing the white trunks with black trim, weighing in at 159 and one half pounds. He comes to us from the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan, and his professional record, 29 victories, 21 KOs, against only two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the number one ranked contender in the world, Thomas Hickok And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks with gold trim, he weighs an even 159 pounds. This 1988 Olympic silver medalist from Pensacola, Florida, is undefeated with a record of 25 and 0, 22 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated IBF middleweight champion of the world, Roy. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. Shave gloves and good luck. All right, we're ready to go. Obviously, Thomas Tate trying to bait Roy Jones Jr. to start this one, but Roy Jones Jr. really didn't mess with that too much. They don't even want to go back to their corners. Roy Jones showing disdain for the annex of Thomas Tate. And we begin round one. What do you look for early, Al? I think Roy Jones wants to box Tate. He wants to move on him and counterpunch him. That's what he told me uh, when I interviewed him earlier this week. And I think that's what we're going to see. So he's getting some good and he's getting some good counter right hands in already. The hand speed of Jones is the big difference here, and would it would figure to be. Thomas Tate is not a huge puncher. But they feel, he and his camp, and Mustafa Muhammad feel, Jones hasn't really been tested much by anybody in some puncher. Bernard Hopkins was a good puncher, but couldn't really land effectively against Jones. Jones has five career first-round knockouts. Tate with three. And right now, Jones unleashing with that right hand. And I think he hurt Thomas Tate with that. Yeah, that back leg, that right leg of Tate wobbling. Well, posturing notwithstanding, this has been a great first round for Jones, and not such a good one for Thomas Tate. Now, you can talk about your opponent a lot, Jones blocking those punches, as Tate did, but when you finally get hit by him, it's a different story. Yeah, you got to produce in the ring, and the hand speed of Jones giving Tate lots of problems. Even when Jones is against the ropes in the corner, which is not a place Roy Jones normally wants to be the hand speed and you can see it it really makes a huge difference in this fight well left hand score there's an uppercut as well by roy jones jr in the black trunks and another one now thomas tate stood up to the punching power of julian jackson who was at that time very much a big puncher in this division and so far despite being hit with big punches this first round he stood up to the power of jones though being dominated this first round that's been all Roy Jones Jr. in the black trunks. And I, I want to point something out right now. Roy Jones Jr. has a history of fading a bit in fights. In other words, even against Hopkins in the later rounds, he wasn't that effective. So I'm sure Tate is thinking, if I can get through this early barrage, I can still get something done against this guy. So we shouldn't count Tate out early, despite the fact that he is getting rocked with some pretty big punches. Closing seconds of this first round. The first title defense for Roy Jones Jr. Tell you what though, Jones is showing a better arsenal of punches and a better variety than I have ever seen from him as a pro. The uh, left hand has worked effectively along with the right. And that is the end of round one. Tate says you didn't hurt me. 
Jones has the scorecard. Good job, baby. Early in the round, uh, Roy Jones got in the right hand against Tate and got it in repeatedly, using the jab to set it up, and that's why he used that jab. Perfect one-two combinations. Then later on in the round, it will be a different weapon. It will be the hooks and the uppercuts by Jones. And what all this does is demonstrate what a good variety of punches Roy Jones has used. Round two underway. And interestingly, only 18 of Jones' 96 punches in round one were Oh, and down goes Tate. Wow. There's an inside left. He's on the corner rope, standing. Richards deal with the count. Oh, and Tate. That's it. His corner comes out and stops it. And Roy Jones Jr. does a dance early in round two. His sixth career second round knockout. Tate just walked right into that inside left. There was, we talked about the variety of punches by, by Roy Jones. Now, he's not known as a devastating left to artist. More power probably in the right hand. But he was able to crank up the hook, land uppercuts, and do everything necessary. And here's what's significant about this victory. The fact is, no one else has knocked Thomas Tate out before. And he's been in there against the likes of Julian Jackson uh, and has not been sent down. So this is significant, and it shows the kind of power that Roy Jones wanted to show to send a message to some of the other good middleweights. 23rd knockout, and they have Thomas Tate seated right above us. Smart move. They got him on a stool. And right now, he's in position. I want you to stand up and go over the side position. Take a close look at him. Take your time. No need to rush it. Roy Jones Jr. puts back on that IBF middleweight championship belt. His first title defense was awesome. I love it. Well, an interesting start to round two. Roy Jones Jr. just pummeling Thomas Tate. number one, baby! And the interesting thing is, uh, the hand speed of Jones was just too much. And we'll take a look at the end of this spot. Yeah, let's watch it. I didn't even know what the hell you hit him with. A good left hand on the inside with a hook by Roy Jones Jr. And, you know, you don't usually land a left hook like that from the outside, Bob. But, but Jones was able to do that. Here it is from the outside. I mean, you don't normally land a lunging left hook like that. Um, and get it in in that fashion. The boy it landed with a lot of authority. And yeah, Tate was leaning, too. Oh, wow. Looked a little bit like Floyd Patterson in the old days. Remember when he used to kind of jump out there with that hook? Also a Joe Frazier hook that yeah. hurt Muhammad Ali at Madison Square Garden in their first fight. Let's take a look. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad comes running right above us to stop this thing. He realized that Thomas Tate was in huge trouble, and you would have to assume Richard Steele was thinking about stopping it anyway. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad says, uh-uh. Just for a moment, Thomas Tate was distressed, but it was, uh, as you see his legs wobble, you know that Thomas Tate did not want anything to do with it. And for Roy Jones Jr., this would be a dance step that Don Cornelius would be proud to put on his show. He looked like Hammer. Doing yes, a gallop he did indeed. Thomas Tate was immediately put down on the stool at that point. Roy Jones Jr. celebrates win number 26, his 23rd knockout in very, very impressive style. Number one. Now we take you up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Richard Steele calls the halt at about 30 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO victory and still... The undefeated IDF middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. 
Well, Thomas Tate did all the talking before the fight. Roy Jones Jr. with that left hand finished it quickly. Round number two in a very impressive and showing. Thomas Roy Tate, Jones Jr. Jones. gets win number 26, and here are the final numbers. Jones throwing 99 punches. He connected 51 of them. That's 52%. He just took the fight to Tate from the start, used the left hand and the right hand, and was dominant in winning this round, this fight in just two rounds of action. Al Bernstein has made his way into the ring. He's standing by with Roy Jones, Jr. Thank you, Bob. I am here with Roy Jones, Jr., who did something pretty significant here. Thomas Tate had not been knocked out to this point, and I get the feeling you really wanted a knockout in this fight because of all the stuff that had preceded the fight. Well, um, first of all, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to come out here and do the things that I did. Uh, what's up, Pensacola? Everybody, I still love you. I'm number one. like to hey, JT, Mike, Ray, everybody from Great Gorge. Uh, you know, it was wonderful. I came out here to get him because, for one, Bob Aaron made me a proposition. He told me the best performance of the night would be the point guard for his new basketball team. I had to have it. Be the point guard for the... So you're going to play for the new New Orleans ball club playing point guard? Uh, that's Bob. Go back on his, word, on his word. Now, that's what he told me, so I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's some pretty good motivation now that I think about it. Some darn good motivation. What's up, PC? All right, you got, you got the job done. He got it done early. One thing that it struck me was very impressive about your performance and it's often the case with you, but even more so tonight, was the variety of punches. You, you started out with the jab, the straight right hand, but in the, the second round, you really came with the hooks and the uppercut. Well, the second round, see, the thing was, nobody never seen me really fight. You know, everybody see me move around the box because, like I told you, I don't get paid to really fight. So tonight, you know, I was out here, and I said, my, my title's on the line, so I may as well go ahead and fight. So he wanted to fight. He talked about how he's going to come at me. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> it's part of that also, the fact that, uh, let's face it, people are thinking now in terms of these mega fights. You against Tony, there's Gerald McClellan out there, there's all these middleweights and super middleweights out there. Is part of it to establish in people's minds that Roy Jones Jr. might be the elite of that or that you want to think of yourself as the elite? What's up, Tony? What's up, Ms. Grant? Ms. Grant? I am the elite of that. We ain't got to discuss that. They know when it comes time to fight, anybody who want to fight, hey, put the money down, I will do it. Understand? He just found that out. He's talking about a big dog. He got a big dog right here. Anybody who want to get a job, we can do it. All right. All right, Roy, let's take a peek at the end of the fight here. You really landed a lunging left hook. It was because kind of an interesting punch. Because I fooled him. I knew he was sending him at me, so he thought I wasn't set. And I just set him up with a nice, beautiful left hook. I don't, I don't, sometimes I don't understand how I threw it so pretty. Look at him, just a sleeve. Look at him. Just a pretty, come on, come on. Come on, follow the champ. Edmund Mustafa sending him at me. Come on, get him, come on, get him. Come on, get him. Hold up, champ. He gave him what he wants. Here it is.